What is he? By Reed Works. Imagine an 11 year old boy named Paul. Now imagine Paul inside a wood cabin. He is shivering. It is cold outside and inside the cabin isn't much warmer. Paul can hear the rain beating down on the roof. Every few minutes there would be a loud boom and thunder would shake the cabin walls. Paul is happy to be inside the cabin, safe and dry with his family. Let's make this cabin warmer, says his father. Paul, help me build a fire. Paul fetches the firewood and then watches as his father carefully stacks the logs in the shape of a pyramid. Paul's father puts several small sticks of kindling in the bottom of the pyramid. The kindling would catch on fire much more quickly than the big logs. Paul's father lights a match, and soon the logs crackle and burn in the fireplace, shooting off small sparks. The fire gives off some light, but it also gives off heat. Within 30 minutes, the inside of the cabin is warm and toasty. Thanks to the radiation of heat from the fire, Paul isn't shivering anymore. Though all that Paul's father did was light a match to start the fire, there was a complex set of interactions that had to occur for the fire to ignite and grow. There are three components needed for a fire to successfully burn, fuel, oxygen, and a heat source. The matches were the heat source and the logs were the fuel. The oxygen supply came from the air around the fireplace. That's why Paul's father had to pile up the logs as a pyramid with a space in between them. If the logs had been too close together, there wouldn't have been enough oxygen for the fire and it could have fizzled out. A wood fire can grow very quickly. That's why it's so important to be careful when lighting fires and to never leave them unsupervised. A wood fire, like the one in Paul's fireplace, can reach temperatures over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The hottest part of the fire is often the red glowing embers that are left in the fireplace once the wood has burned through. These embers can be as hot as 1,200 to 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Though fire is a common heat source, heat can come from many different sources. Heat can also be transferred from one object to another in a variety of ways. Scientists use the term heat to refer to the energy transferred when two objects or systems are at different temperatures. Heat naturally moves from warmer areas to cooler ones. Hot to cold, hot to cold. Think of what happens if you leave a bowl of ice cream out in hot weather. At first, the ice cream is much cooler than the air around it. But if you go back in an hour, the ice cream has melted and is roughly the same temperature as the surrounding air. The heat from the air has moved to the ice cream. In this example, the air is the heat source, the place where the higher temperature is found. The ice cream is the heat sink or the place where the heat moves. Whenever there is a temperature difference in a system or group of objects, the heat will naturally move from the heat source to the heat sink. How does heat transfer from one object to another? Heat transfers in three different ways. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is the transfer of heat between two surfaces that are directly in contact with one another. When you burn yourself on a hot pan while making scrambled eggs, that's an example of conduction. The heat is transferring from a very hot surface, the frying pan, to a cooler surface, your hand. Heat transfers through some materials better than others. Materials, oh, metals are especially good thermal conductors. That's why pots and pans are made out of metal. Materials that are very slow to transfer heat are called thermal insulators. Some examples of materials that are thermal insulators include rubber and cork. Typically, materials that are good thermal conductors like gold, silver, and copper are also good conductors of electricity. The second way that heat can transfer is through convection. Convection is the transfer of heat through the movement of large amounts of a liquid or gas. An example of this is the storm outside Paul's cabin. Thunder and lightning are caused when a large mass of hot air meets a large mass of cool air. Warm air tends to rise and cool air tends to fall. 
The movement of these air masses and the transfer of energy that occurs are called convection. The third way heat transfer can occur is through a process called radiation. Radiation is when there is no material transferring the heat. Instead, the energy is carried by electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves come, off, come in a variety of types. They can be infrared, visible light, UV, or radio waves. The hotter the object is, the more infrared radiation and heat it gives off. The fire that Paul is looking at is radiating heat into the rest of the cabin. Another example of heat radiation is the sun. At the sun's core temperature is at least 10 million Kelvin. And on the surface of the sun, the temperature is about 6,000 Kelvin. Kelvin is a form of measurement of heat that scientists use instead of measuring degrees in Fahrenheit or Celsius. What does 10 million Kelvin actually feel like? It's about 30,000 times as hot as boiling water. All of the heat travels from the sun to the earth on electromagnetic waves. To reach the earth's surface, the waves must travel through 93 million miles of our solar system. When the radiation arrives from the sun to the earth, it causes the ground to heat up. An object that is especially good at radiating heat is called a black body. The sun is a perfect example of a black body. The earth is also a black body. It doesn't it doesn't just absorb heat from the sun's electromagnetic waves. The Earth also radi radiates heat out into space. Some of the heat that Earth radiates is the same energy from the sun. Around 30% of the electromagnetic waves that arrive from the sun are bounced back into outer space by the Earth. The rest of the electromagnetic energy is either absor absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere or heats the Earth's surface and oceans of the earth.